today I have with me Father Paul Jarvis. He is a diocesan priest based in New York. Welcome to our program, Father. I'll now allow you to introduce yourself to our viewers. I am not only uh, Father Paul Jarvis, I'm a Guyanese, um, but I left Guyana about 42 years ago, so I, I was a teenager, you know, when I left. Um, and I've been a priest in New York for 31 years. And after such a long time, being away from Ghana for such a long time, um, um, I'd asked my bishop, who is uh, Bishop um, Nicholas de Marcio of the Brooklyn, New York Diocese, if he would allow me to, to go on a sabbatical and he agreed, so here, um, here I am, you know, um, I've already spent two months and I have another uh, three months. At the end of my sabbatical, I will, I will be returning to, um, to New York and j on March the 15th, and I will be given a new assignment as a parish priest. Okay, um, so do you know where you'll, you'll be, where's your nest? Uh, yes, I will be assigned to St. Clair's Church in Rosedale, Queens, which is in the vicinity of Kennedy um, Airport. Okay. So how have your vis visit to Ghana been so far? So far, I am enjoying every day being in Guyana um, because um, even though I have visited Guyana um, often, you know, over the 42 years that I've left. I, it's the first time that I'm here for uh, such a relatively uh, long period. And, and so I enjoy um, being here for the Christmas Novena, which brought back memories to me of the Christmas Novena, which I attended at St. Pius X Church, and I must let viewers know that I, um, I am from St. Pius X Parish, along with um, Monsignor Montrose. So St. Pius X has produced actually uh, three priests, Father um, Montrose, um, myself, and Father Floyd Grace, who, um, like myself, um, immigrated to New York and um, he became a priest of the Archdiocese of New York, but he died uh, tragically from cancer, you know, um, as a young priest. Okay. Being a parish priest in New York, what is your experience there? My experience of being a parish priest in New York is quite different um, from being a priest here in Guyana. Of course, in New York, the Roman Catholic Church is, is, is much bigger, you know. Brooklyn has about 1.8 million Catholics within the diocese, uh, which consists of Brooklyn and Queens Borough, two of the five boroughs of New York City. So it means that there are a lot of churches in, um, in the Brooklyn Diocese and in the New York Archdiocese. There are many churches and there are a great number of priests. Whereas in Guyana, the Catholic population is, uh, is a, it's small and, uh, and there is a greater shortage of priests here in Guyana. So there are differences, but there's um, similarities, of course, because um, in Guyana, as well as in New York, people go to Mass, you know, in order to be fed by the Word of God and the Holy Eucharist and to receive all the spiritual um, help that they need for their everyday uh, lives. And, and the, the priest, um, it does not matter, you know, um, where we are, you know, we try to be um, responsive, you know, to the spiritual uh, needs 
of, 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 of people. But yes, the New York um, dioceses are, 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 are huge in terms of the numbers of people. But, it, but it's not about numbers, you know, it's about uh, people who have a strong identification with the church. And I would say that in Guyana, my experience is that people are very proud of their local uh, parishes. Um, for the most part, they are well kept, the churches are in good conditions, and, um, and the surrounding grounds. So people have great pride in being a member of a particular church, and that is also true in, um, in New York. Okay. In terms, they, well, you know this year is um, Pope Francis dedicates the year, the year of the family. Of, yeah, a consecrated life. Yes. Um, so how do you think we could encourage young people, males, females, to take up that responsibility within the church? Okay, I think that's a very um, good question, you know. I'm sorry, but I was just jumping ahead oh. also to the Synod and the family, okay. you know, which is really very important, but I think they are related. Yes. Um, because in Guyana so far, um, I've been impressed by um, the, 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 um, the young um, Catholics, the, the youths, young Catholic youth in various churches, um, many of them are, are very actively involved in youth groups in their parishes. And um, around this Christmas time, they, um, um, they fed the poor and they provided toys to the children. Um, but vocations uh, to the priesthood and to religious life um, has to be nurtured by uh, Catholic families. And Catholic families have to see the need for their sons and daughters to respond to the, um, to the call of the Lord because I think the Lord is calling young men um, and young women to, to enter into religious life. But families have to encourage their children to think about the priesthood and to think about uh, religious lives. And, 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 of, and of course, um, when Catholic families are practicing the faith and, and are living um, as good citizens and they are good examples to people, I think it's easy for their children, you know, um, to want to think about a religious uh, vocation. But as Pope Francis is preparing the church for the worldwide synod on the family, we are reminded of how important it, it was a family. Uh, family life is just think about Jesus. Um, Jesus, um, you know, who was born, born as the Son of God, um, and, um, and he um, completed his work of salvation for us. We have to remember that, that he grew up in a human family and he needed the good example of his mother Mary and his foster father Joseph. And, and we can say that they had a great influence also on him in becoming the person that, that his heavenly father, you know, um, you know, had destined for him to be the savior of the world. So Mary and Joseph played a very important role. And today, um, Catholic families certainly have to um, encourage their children, you know, to seek a religious vocation. And not only families, but I think all members of the church, if they see a young man or a young woman um, who are religiously inclined, yeah, it would be very good, you know, to for them, you know, to to ask the um, the young people, you know, to think about um, a religious vocation because sometimes people just need a little encouragement. I would like to ask you if you could encourage your parishioners to subscribe to our Catholic Standard, the online Catholic Standard, and to also 
to watch our videos, short videos on our YouTube channel, Catholic Media Initiatives. And I think that is one way that they would be able to to stay connected and to know what the church is producing and what is happening within the church. I'm very glad you brought that up um, because the Guyanese Mass Committee has been encouraging for the past months for Catholics uh, to subscribe to the Catholic Standard online. And in fact, I think um, we started a drive, you know, um, to, to, to get, um, to sign people up, you know, to subscri subscribe to um, the Catholic Standard. To all the Catholics in New York, um, I would like to encourage you to subscribe to our Catholic Standard online. To the Guyanese Catholics who still um, don't know who um, don't know anything about me, so it's a way for me to let them know that I'm a proud um, son of Guyana, <laughs> <laughs> and I am doing little. In fact, um, it's not really much in terms of my service uh, to the Church of Guyana, but I'm also a priest of the Universal Catholic Church. And in the United States, um, I have really um, offered a lot of services to the church in the U.S., which would be similar to the priests from different countries who have come to Guyana and are offering their services. You know, we have a commitment um, to our countries, but to, to spread the kingdom of God, you know, um, you know, in the universal church. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you.